Hello, this is Mr. Huff, and I want to walk you through making a snail cam based on parameters. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Parts Studio, and the first thing I need to do is establish my parameters. So I have a parameter for the nominal dimension, which is usually the uh, entire circumference of the cam. And then we'll also do one for thickness and one for the hole, just to make sure Everything is parametrically designed. So let's start by starting a variable. Usually, if you're running on shape and full screen, you'll see the variable right in here somewhere. But since it's not there, we're going to go choose it. It's the one that has the little X. So we're going to choose a variable. First, thing we're going to do is going to be nom, which is short for nominal. And I'm going to set that to four inches. And then we're going to start another one. We're going to call this one, uh, let's call this one thickness, or just thick. And it's going to be 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then we're going to do another one. And we're going to call this one the hole. So in our design, we're going to have a 0.25 inch hole, that is a 0.25 inch square hole in the center. Okay, so now I have my dimensions set. Now we need to start some sketches. So we need to establish a sketch, and I am going to start with a lot of construction circles. So I've got this. We're going to turn off the plane, and I'm going to do a center point circle starting from here. And I'm just going to click on it, and it won't let me type right there until I escape. And so I'm going to get out of that, change this dimension to hashtag nom. All right, so that's our nominal dimension. The other thing we need to do is on this, it needs to be a construction line, okay? We're gonna do another center point circle. Actually, we're gonna do two more. So we're gonna do one here. And I can't type in those directly. Like I can only, I can't really type anything. So I just escaped and we're going to apply a dimension here of instead of 2.46 we're going to do hashtag nominal times 0.5 which is half right so it's going to be a circle that's half the size of the nominal dimension and i need one other circle for a guide so i'm going to choose the center point circle make it a construction line choose here and click out here somewhere Hit escape so I don't have a number in there. And then I'm going to go choose a dimension. And this is going to be three fourths of the nominal dimension. Uh, so I'm going to type hashtag nom and we're going to multiply times three divided by four or 0.75 and we get that. Uh, I'm going to clean these up a little bit. So I'm going to grab this four. Actually, let's escape a couple of times. I want this four to be up here, and this one to be down here, and this one to be kind of like here. I like to arrange diameters where they're easy to read. Okay, now we need some vertical lines. So I'm going to choose line. I'm also going to be making a construction line here. We're going to go from here straight up, and probably four is fine. Okay, and then I'm going to go from here construction lines straight down and let's just make these just to make sure there's never an error we're going to add a dimension on these and we're going to put that that is hashtag nominal so this line will always be longer hashtag nominal this line will always be longer than our circle okay so that's our first cluttery attempt. Now what we're going to do is switch to a three-point arc. So you know you have multiple arcs to choose from. We're going to use the three-point. And if we look at our drawing, actually we need to add some points first. So we're going to do points. We're going to put a point here at the very top. We're going to put a point here where these intersect at the three-quarter mark. And we're going to put another point here where these intersect at the halfway point. Okay, now we can do our three-point arc.
So we're going to do a three-point arc between here and here. And I'm going to pull this over this way. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. See that little radius marker? I'm going to constrain that. So I'm going to put it kind of right of the horizontal line. No, what is that? Vertical line. And now I'm going to do a constraint. Except I can't see it. I'm going to do a constraint that is coincident. And I'm going to put a coincident constraint between this and this vertical line. And what that's going to do is lock this arc to that vertical axis. Now we're going to do one more. Three point. And I'm going to connect this one to this one. And I want to be on this side of that line. And we're going to add a coincident constraint between here and here. And it put it on the wrong side, so we're going to try it again. We're going to put a coincident constraint. Let's try choosing the line first. And here. Did it again. Let's get it really close and see why it's doing that. What if we just, it snapped it when we did that. Okay, so I just put the, put it right on there and it threw a coincident constraint on there. You can see it right there. All right. And then we need one more line. A line from this to this. And now we have our shape. There's one more thing we need to do. We're going to add a square and we're going to get, I'm just going to draw it over here on the side for now and escape. Now we're going to choose the dimensions here and we're going to put this is going to be whole and this is going to be whole as well all right and then the other thing i'm going to do is choose a line make it a construction line zoom in on this little guy we'll move him over that's not what i wanted Control Z, I want that back to where it what? Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. I'm losing an argument to on shape. Alright, let's zoom in on this. I want a shift one. Okay, shift one brings us back to the front view. We're gonna put a line, it's gonna be a construction line, it's gonna be connected from this corner to this corner. And then we're going to do a coincident constraint between the center point of this line or is it a point constraint midpoint so we're going to find the midpoint of this line let's add a point it's not showing up when i go across here there's my midpoint midpoint and now i can do a coincident constraint between this point and the origin all right got it finish the sketch and then i like to extrude in an isometric view and i'm going to click on extrude and i'm going to click the sketch and it should you should see a tiny hole right in the middle and for the depth we're going to use our thickness so we're going to put a hashtag thick not think thick and finish all right so there is my cam okay the power of this is this uh, if I decide to change the size of the hole all I have to do is go in here and say I want this to be 0.33 and hit check and it adjusts the size of the hole made it a little bit bigger if I want to put it back I just go in and put 0.25. If I want the thickness to be different, I can go in here and double click that and say, oh, that should have been uh, one inch. And then when I hit the check mark, I have a much thicker cam. And we're going to put that at uh, 3 sixteenths. And the really cool thing is when I choose the nominal, I can make it bigger or I can make it 
really small. Okay, so you can adjust the size of the cam very quickly. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and assign the material ABS. And then we'll also go in and let's uh, change the color to some color you like. Edit appearance. I like this green. Okay, so we'll go with that. Anyway, that's how to design a cam. Name it appropriately instead of part one. Make a snail cam, something like that. And you should be good to go.